Hello, I am Jesse Weiler here for the Institute on Religious Life with Sister Martina Bednard, and she is a member of the Sisters of the Most Holy Soul of Christ in Stewart, Florida. Sister, how are you doing today? I am blessed. Me, and me, me too. This is my, this is my uh, second language. I am Polish, so I, really, I apologize for any mistake that I will make. Oh, that's okay. I think I think everybody will definitely understand. Uh, so we're very excited to talk with you and to hear about your story and your life and about the most holy soul of, of Christ the Lord. But before we begin, as always, would you mind leading us in prayer? Yes, uh, I would like to say a prayer uh, that was written by our mother foundress, Mother Paula Sofia Tiber. And it's an act of adoration and communion with Jesus Christ present in us. So I will ask Jesus when I will say this prayer to touch everyone who hear us so he can work in us and through us. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Jesus living in me, I bless your presence in me. Take me into your supreme, divine and saving possession and rule over me at each moment of the day, so that I may faithfully fulfill your most holy will. I live only for you, Lord, and wish to carry out everything you have determined to accomplish through me. Therefore, Jesus, may you please work in me and through me, so I might be able to follow your path to achieve what is destined for me. You know, my Jesus, that the moments of life flow by very quickly without fruit, but I wish to make use all of them for your glory. Therefore, draw me by your most holy will to yourself dwelling within me, so that I may not depart from you even for a moment, but always live in you, with you, and for you dwelling within me. I wish to live in you my dear Savior, so that I may become like you, so you may obtain me forever as one living in you, so that I may become your faithful reflection. Take me into your complete possession, so I may live in you and with you for the glory of the Heavenly Father, and that you may reign over my whole intellect and will so that I may order the think, desire, and feel only through you, in you, and with the help of your grace, together with you. May your love be manifested through me. May your intellect raise my whole being up to you, and may your most holy will unite and make me one with you forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Beautiful prayer. Thank you so much for for that. Uh, So what we always do in the beginning of our show, we like to hear a little bit about how our guests find religious life and how they discover the call to religious life. And so I'm just very curious, you know, you said, um, you know, Polish is your first language. You made it all the way here. There's a lot going on in your life. But uh, can you walk me through that very beginning part of your call to the religious life? Yes. Um, you know, when I am really pondering about this, when I'm looking, you know, going back, I I can see how God is really working in my life. It's, it's I can see that that this is God's call. It's not mine. I didn't, I only responded. I didn't choose it. It's my response to him. Um, the thing is that I have never knew sisters. Uh, I'm not really familiar with religious life. And uh, I only knew the uh, priest in my parish um, who was the pastor, and, and that's it. And you know, when I was in seventh grade, I remember right now the time and the day, it was afternoon. And I was actually, I was not praying. I was just doing something in in the hallway, in my house. And then something extraordinary came. It was something that was, that came from my, from inside. And that, that, that God is calling me. I was like, wow, amazing. What is this? And I was like, wow. 
I, it, it brought me so much joy. And at that one second, I knew that, that God wants me to be a religious. I have no idea what is this. You know, it was like so funny. And it was, I, my heart was overjoyed. And then I ran, I ran. I need to, to, to find someone to share this beautiful news with someone. So I knew my father was um, working on the floor uh, on the, um, in one of the rooms. So I ran and I said, Daddy, Daddy, I want to become religious. He was looking at me because I just came sudden. I never spoke to him about this, but I knew I can um, trust him uh, because he was my great support. He was always a good role model. And he said, oh, wow, I am happy to hear that. That was his response. So I was really like encouraged, you know, I didn't know anything about this. But because my father, he was a constructor. Uh, so he was really building churches around the Poland. So when I shared this with him, uh, I knew he can help me. So God is kind of using my father in my life. So and that's it, you know, it's like I never spoke anything about this. And my father, when he went um, to Warsaw, he was building a church over there and he met sisters who was like who were uh, ministering in, in one of the churches. Um, and he said, you know what, sister, my daughter shared with me that she wants to become a sister and what she should do. So she recommended uh, if she can, he can take me to our mother house in Krakow. And so I can see because I really was very young. Uh, I was uh, in seventh grade, 13. So so my said, father said, OK, I will do it. So then he, he when he came back, he told me, would you like to see the sisters? I said, sure, I would like to see. So he took me um, when I was actually in eighth grade, in the middle of eighth grade, uh, he took me to Krakow, to our mother house. And when I went, I really felt like this convent is my home. You know, everyone was kind of different. I never knew the sisters, but, but something was melting in me. It was something that I knew that, you know, I knew that God wants me to be here. So I spoke with um, with the sister who was in charge of uh, candidates and postulants and also even uh, uh, novitiate sisters. And, I, and she kind of talked with me. She wanted to find out why I want to become a sister. And so I shared with, with her what I was thinking. And she said, OK, and she took me to a special house where when the candidates were present, postulants, and she took me to the adoration, to the adoration chapel. Oh, I really felt peace. I was was looking at the sisters who were in that little chapel. I wanted to see how they if they are like human or what is this like girls, normal girls or, or maybe like girls who are like, you know, already so pious. And they said they are normal, like me. So then I was happy. Uh, so then when I came with my father uh, back home, aha, one more thing. At the end, uh, my the director of Novichet, she gave me a little brochure like uh, about how to say the rosary and uh, a booklet about our mother Fandres, Mother Paula Tiber, and a few pictures. Wow, I tell you, that was like, uh, like a relic for me. When I came home, I hide it so no one, no one really find it. I knew I had many siblings, so and the little ones, so they could take it and tear it apart, you know, so I make sure I have it. And whenever I have spare time, I, I was reading it and I was so happy. And after eighth grade, when my eighth grade, uh, when I was done with eighth grade, I told my father, father, I am going. And he said he forgot about this because it was I never spoke about this. And he said, where are you going? You don't remember? I'm going to that convent to the Sisters of the Soul of Christ. And he was, you know, I have to see that he was a little bit fighting with himself. I was so young. I just finished eighth grade. Uh, and, and he didn't know if it's really a real vocation or just my imagination. And I was so stubborn here. I said, no matter what you say, no matter what others say, I'm going. <laughs> that was really like I knew this is like grace of vocation that God was really working in me 
And so he even like said to me that, you know what, Ella, because that was my my baptismal name, Elżbieta, you know, over there you will not do whatever you want. You have to really listen. And, and I think that they, you will not watch too much TV because I see that you are watching a lot of TV here at home. And even of those, I know it was my kind of weakness. I said, no matter what, daddy, I'm going. So took, he took me. I, when I came, uh, I have to say I was never homesick. I was so happy and uh, that I entered the community. Um, but then I when after my first vow, I, I think I was homesick. You know, I think that God gave me, gave me, this, took away these emotions so I can be rooted, you know, in this community. And, and then um, I will be fine. And I, I, actually, after I have my first vows, when I went home, I really got homesick. When I came back, it was hard for me. But my um, sister who was in charge of me, she said, it's all right, you, it's all right, you, you can overcome this. And I did, you know. Um, so I have to say that it's really special. And I, I really enjoy being sister. Uh, sisters, that is really kind of uh, the part of congregation of the most holy soul of Christ. Although it was something new, I could learn everything, how to, what, what is expected from me. And definitely that God wants to deepen relationship with me. So I have to say that that step by step, Jesus himself was leading me. I answered and, 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 and what he wants me to cooperate with him. So I think the trust that I have, uh, I put it in him completely. Uh, I do not, because without it, I, I am right now thinking, how could I do this? It's, it was really God's grace, you know, how God was led, lead, uh, uh, leading me to this. That, that is great. Uh, I've, I, my biggest question, I would say, through all of this is we all know that, uh, you know, Poland had a pretty uh, difficult political climate. Probably a lot of that stuff was still in recovery there. So what was that like in, you know, in a country that was recovering and then, you know, being refounded in Christianity uh, a lot in thanks to uh, St. John Paul II, obviously. But, you know, there's a lot that was happening there. So how were you able to fulfill that and live that out in, in kind of the, the despair and the remnants of all of those political climate issues? Yes, uh, actually, I was really very young. I didn't experience that much because my, uh, my little town kind of village was really kind of like a south part of Poland. So... Uh, like bigger cities or like bigger villages could experience like more violence, you know, um, it is. But I think that because of my peace and harmony in my family, and I think also the church, you know, as a parish, the pastor, priest. So everyone had like, it was like I was kind of spare for that one. So, um, so. I don't have to say that really uh, that made like a big, um, big, a big influence. On was there me, was there a know? big revival in religious vocations after that after the fall of you know communism and everything? Uh, not really, not not in no, because in Poland we had a great uh, great cardinal who was a uh, pri primate, and he was very strong in in our church. So. He was kind of, and all the bishops, the church was so strong. We are not divided. We are united all together. So because of Christ, we are united. So we could see how God was working in us, you know. Uh, and John Paul II, when I entered really my community in 1983, so he was already Pope. Uh, and he was the one who knew us, who prayed for us, and and we could uh, put our faith in him. We knew that even he is in Rome, he will not leave us. And he was a great strength and support for us Polish people. That is. And he, as a pope, he really, uh, he, how he was like he influenced me a lot as a teenager. So I think because of this. I, I, with all my heart, I could say yes to God because I knew there are people who are strong, who are not waving from one side to another, who are totally, uh, 
you know, dedicated to God, and I thought I can be one of them. So, you know, it, it, it's, it was really uh, great for me to see this kind of people. So uh, moving, moving on to kind of the topic and the community that you're with, uh, I, you know, personally, I've never heard this before, uh, you know, before talking with you, but what is the most holy soul of, of Christ uh, the Lord? And how did the foundress come, you know, with this image and this charism to, to create this amazing religious community? Yes, it's everything is like God's grace, you know, uh, because I just I will just maybe share a little bit about our mother foundress. So um, our mother foundress, Paula Sofia Tiber, was born in uh, 1890 in Via Podlaska in Poland. And she was the 15th child in the family. So imagine the 15 in today's like world. World, it was wow, what a large family! And think about people who who made abortion. If if her mom did it, we would never have mother founders and this beautiful community. So thanks be to God, her family was pro life, and so she uh, was born in a very Catholic but rich family. Her father was uh, owner of a big factory, and he had such a beautiful heart, generous heart. So he employed 300 like uh, poverty workers. He built little houses by, by the factory so they don't have to go far away. He really was so nice to them. So little Sophia saw love of, of her parents toward people and they, the parents took care of this, of everyone who came to their business and, and uh, Mr. Tiber, he said whatever he said, he didn't have to write anything down because when he said it, he said that's the word of Tiber and everyone knew whatever he said, he would do no matter what. So it was like a, he had a great, great trust in, in other people. So, um, so she really had a very beautiful life, but at 12, her mom passed away. And then she moved, uh, her family moved to Zhytomyr, and it's a, a little town that um, right now is Ukraine. But because they saw the Russian was Polish over there, but her family made sure that she learns Polish. So they had special uh, teachers who came to home and teach her how to speak Polish. And when mom, mom passed away, she was influenced with her one of her brother because he just gave he was a professor so he gave it a little like books but these books were um written uh, uh, by uh, atheist philosophers and it was kind of like uh, a lot of poison that was coming from these books it was against the clergy the church and because of that she lost her faith. She so her faith was in crisis. So, but because she was beautiful, she had really. Uh, she had. She was very talented. She had ex exquis exquisite soprano voice, and she was really great at music and art. So she thought she would be happy because of that, and she saw that no. She was searching for eight years, eight years. Um, she left the church, she stopped praying, but what was one thing that I think that brought her back to church, that she never uh, stopped like worshiping God the Father, especially being in the nature. And after eight years, because she was artistic, she studied in Kiev, she studied in Berlin and in, in Krakow, she went in Kiev to one of the churches. She wanted to see how the church was, in the churches was a thumb before the resurrection, so that was Good Friday. She wanted to see it from the artistic point of view. When she went, she just looked at the Blessed Sacrament that was in Manstrand and immediately she knew this is Jesus, her happiness, her love, her joy. She knelt down and she said, Jesus, you are the one, the source of my happiness. 
I know I was searching for you everywhere, but you are here. And since that time, she started, um, she started coming back to the church after eight years. And she also saw the, um, she saw the terrible things that was happening because of World War, World War First, and also Bolshevik Re uh, Revolution. How so much evil people can do to one another. So she knew it's so difficult to live without the light of faith. And because she returned back to the church one day, she was uh, in her in her um, home and she was sick. She couldn't go uh, to the church for mass. So she heard the bells calling everyone to come to mass and she felt sorry. At that time, you know, it was uh, 1918, she heard a voice coming from inside of her and she heard it like a human being. I am here, I am in you, don't worry, please, please, please think about me, I love you and, and, and I want to be part of your life. And she was thinking, what is that? Am I like getting crazy or what is that? Did I, did I hear this voice? And as he was looked, she was looking around, where is this voice coming from? And then she discovered that it's coming from inside, from her soul. So, um, so that when first Jesus re revealed to her that special presence, that he is not only living in the tabernacle, not only uh, being in, among the people, but especially in the sanctuary of human soul. So his desire was to, to be lived to live in the human soul powerfully so he can possess us freely. So I really freely um, give him my intellect so the intellect can be filled with his thoughts, with his love, and my will can be united with his. So we together discover what is God, God's will, what is the will of his heavenly father. And, and and that could bring to rebirth, you know, to renewal. Um, and and that's the beauty, you know, of, of Jesus and my me and Jesus being together. So I am not only me, not only I myself, but only also Christ. And actually uh, she this um, this life of Christ in human souls have their roots in the sacred scriptures. And I have one that usually she often quoted when she was like alive or in her writing. She wrote a lot, a lot. Uh, in, in the letter of St. Paul to Galatians, chapter 2, verse 20, yet I live no longer I, but Christ lives in me. So really, it's both ways. If Christ lives in me, I need to make sure that I treat my body, my soul in a beautiful way. Because God, God is the one who is the Lord, who is king of my life. And also, I need to make sure that I treat another person that I meet, that I know or I don't know, even with the same respect. Because I need to see Jesus, even if that person is sometimes mean to me, okay? So what is my response to that person? Am, will I be mean to, to her or to him because she or he was done to me? No, I have to see beyond that rudeness, the, beyond these bad words or whatever was, his beautiful soul that was created into God's image. So that also goes with the mystical body that our mother foundress um, was talking about, and it's really a whole community, uh, whole, whole uh, the heritage that she left for us. It's really based on on, on these beautiful words that um, Jesus said in the Gospel of Saint John, chapter six, verse fifty-six. No, um, I'm sorry, no, I mixed mixed this up. I'm sorry. Uh, that would be. Um, I'm sorry, that's John chapter 15, verse 5. I am the vine and you are the branches. Whoever be, 
the abides in me and I in him will bear abundant fruit for without me you can do nothing so we because it's Jesus in us we really take his thoughts and allow him to work in us so so he can think through me he can speak through me so by this and he can act through me I can bring God's glory because then I, Jesus is increasing in me and I myself is decreased like like John, uh, John the Baptist said but although God is very powerful he can do anything he cannot do anything with me unless I say yes he is living in me but I might tie his hands and he cannot do anything because I'm not thinking about him I really I do not am present to him or I do not allow him to be present to others so that's the key it's like sometimes it's like I am thinking okay Jesus comes to my soul in the Holy Eucharist and then am I united with him what do I do or maybe I'm just giving him like book book to read. Okay, you are here, read it, and then I'll do my stuff. You know, it's just kind of funny way. But many times we do like the with Jesus. We we do not. Sometimes we are not serious that he is thirsty for our company. He wants to be part of course of, of our life. Whatever we are doing, that we are doing with him. Now you have an image of this. Uh, you know, the most holy soul of Christ the Lord, right? Yes. Oh, I do have, this is the image, okay, um, this is the image, a beautiful picture uh, of the um, soul of Christ, we call it also a radiant Jesus, okay, um, why do we have like this, because our mother founders had vision, many vision, and he, often he came like this to her, so, um, as you can see, his hands are like inviting, like, come closer, don't be afraid, okay and and the, his soul is like in the middle it's bright that's really his soul although we do not know exactly we cannot see soul but our mother of andres had understood this is is his soul okay that's connecting with his body and ever and all these races that that's coming from his soul are kind of finished with the bubbles and she understood this as a human being that our souls are connected with him okay so we can be one and the thing is that is you can see the uh, colors okay the when jesus when you, we are close to him he's bright we are bright too but when we go a bit farther we go our own way we really don't want to cooperate with that we just we are going into darkness mm -hmm. so still we we have we are alive but maybe uh, spiritually we are dead because we are not active mm -hmm. what really jesus wants us to be active he wants us to be alive to be in the state of grace and then he can work in us and we can be fruitful that's when the mystical body whole church okay can bring him glory that's that, great that's a beautiful picture that's great yes and, so and yes sister we're Kind of short on time here, yes. but we very much share all this that uh, we, we love everything that you've shared with us. I've posted a link in the chat to your uh, community website. So people are interested in finding out more about, uh, you know, the most holy soul of Christ the Lord, because certainly, and I think you would agree, that could help anybody even beyond the religious community kind of the theology yes. behind this i think is incredibly fascinating so i just want to thank you so much yes. for your time and for joining us this week and uh ob oh, oh. obviously we have so much more to talk about and we'd, we'd love to have you back on and i know I, we're you know we're not in the same room but i can just i can tell those those rays of light are emanating from you as well so it's very clear that uh, you're in in the place that God wants you to do the to do His holy work, and uh, to be a member of the corporate body of Christ, and very enjoying the most holy soul of Christ the Lord. So, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. God bless you all. Thank you, Jesse. God bless. Bye.